Hello everyone, welcome back to Algebra. Today we're going to be talking about the Orbit Stabilizer Theorem. So what is this? Uh, remember that we've been talking about group actions, the action of a group G on some set X. So we're defining these products of how a little element G acts on some element X and it gives me some other element in the set X. Uh, these actions have these properties, the identity as, uh, acts as the identity and there is this associative property of this uh, of these actions and uh, we define several concepts we define what's the orbit of an element x under g so the orbit of x are all the possible uh, other values of x that i can get to using the group action on one fixed element x the fixed points and then we also uh, talked about the stabilizer of x uh, which is for a given x in the set the stabilizer are those elements that act trivially on that fixed element x so the orbit stabilizer theorem is a theorem about the orbit and the stabilizer like the name says uh, so let me give you just an example of how it's going to work out so here's an example of how the orbit stabilizer theorem is going to work out uh, we have a group in this case i'm going to take the group uh, identity one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Uh, this group is acting on X, which is the set of uh, four letters, one, two, three, four. It acts naturally on that set. And uh, let's remember uh, what is the orbit of one under this action. I can get to uh, one itself, or I can get to two uh, and nothing else. This one also sends one to two. This one sends one to itself. So the only elements in the orbit are one and two, okay? Uh, what is the stabilizer of one? The stabilizer of one would be those elements in the group that fix one, the identity fixes one, this one doesn't, uh, three, four fixes, and this one doesn't. So the only elements that fix one are the identity and three, four. And uh, the orbit stabilizer theorem tells you that uh, well, one more thing. Remember that in the previous episode, uh, we proved that the stabilizer is a subgroup of G. So we can talk about the index and what the orbit stabilizer theorem says. Orbit stabilizer tells you that the size of the orbit of an element is equal to the index of the stabilizer of its stabilizer so let's see that the uh, that this actually works here uh, the size of the orbit is two the size of the index uh, will be or the index will be the quotient by uh, lagrange's theorem uh, let me actually write it uh, right here that this equality is by lagrange um, the index will be the size of the group divided by the size of the subgroup. The size of the group here is four, the size of the subgroup is two, and four divided by two is two. Uh, so the theorem works, uh, two equals two. So that's, uh, that's the orbit stabilizer theorem. So we're gonna prove that in general, that that works for any uh, action. Uh, so let's see. So here's the theorem. Let G uh, be a finite group and uh, let X be a, a, a finite G set because we're going to be talking about orbits. We want those orbits to be finite. So let X be a finite uh, G set. So that means that there is an action of x of g on x uh, then uh, if x is in x uh, we have we always have that the size of the orbit of x is equal to the index of the stabilizer and uh, again remember that the stabilizer is a subgroup and that we already proved so here's the proof um, we have uh, by Lagrange's theorem, uh, we know that the index of the stabilizer 
is the size of the group divided by the size of the stabilizer. Uh, so the goal is to prove uh, that this is this quotient is equal to the size of the orbit. So we're going to define a bijection. Uh, so we define a map which we hope is a bijection uh, between the orbit and uh, there's going to be uh, a map and uh, elements in the cosets of uh, gx in g okay so uh, how am i going to define this map well if we let y be in the orbit of x uh, then I know, uh, then I know that y has to be in the orbit of x. So it is some uh, g times x. I got to y using x and some g. And, uh, and then I'm going to map that y to the coset g times uh, gx. So that's how the map is going to define, be defined. So I'm going to define a map from the orbit to uh, the cosets that is going to send an orbit, which is equal to G times X is going to be sent to the coset G times uh, GX. Okay, so is this even uh, well-defined? So we have to prove that it's well-defined and a bijection. So uh, let's start with the fact that uh, it is well defined. So again, the map goes from the orbit to cosets, and it's sending uh, a y to uh, g times uh, gx, where uh, y is uh, I get to y from uh, g times x. Now, is this well defined? Uh, what is to be proved? Uh, well, y could be g times x, but it could be that I can get to y using some other element h. And uh, I want to show that, um, well, that if I pick g for my image of phi, I get the same as if I pick h for the image of phi. Okay, so I need to prove that those two things are the same thing. So remember that two cosets, these are two cosets of the uh, stabilizer. Uh, those uh, two cosets are the same if and only if uh, the representatives H inverse times G is in the coset itself. So what I'm going to do is actually prove that this is true. And how do we show that? Uh, well, if uh, y is equal to g times x and is also h acting on x, then uh, let's see that h inverse g is in the stabilizer. So I want to see how much is h inverse g acting on x. And I hope it's just x, so I prove that it's in the stabilizer. Now, uh, because this is a group action, the group action is associative, so I can first act by g and then by h inverse. Now, the action of G on X gives me Y, and therefore, this is just uh, H inverse acting on Y. But Y itself is H times X also, so I can replace Y by H times X. And then I can use, again, the fact that this is associative to write H inverse H uh, dot X. And now that H inverse times H is happening in the group, that's an inverse of each other. And therefore, I get the identity times x, and the identity times x is x. And that shows that h inverse g is in the stabilizer of x, and therefore, the map is well-defined. Great. So now, uh, let's prove that it's a bijection. So again, here is my map is going from the orbit to cosets of the stabilizer sending uh, something in the orbit, uh, something like this, sending it to the coset G O X. And uh, let's first prove that this is a uh, one-to-one, -one, that is injective. Uh, so how do I prove that this is one-to-one? -one? So suppose that phi of uh, Y1 is the same as phi of Y2. 
and I want to show that y1 has to be y2, uh, okay? If so, well, there is uh, g1 and g2 in g uh, such that uh, we have that uh, y1 is g1 times x and y2 is g2 times x. And, uh, and this image would be uh, g1 times the stabilizer and this would be g2 times the stabilizer and uh, we have equality. But if, uh, if that is true, then in particular, well, G1 or say G2 is in this uh, coset. So if this is true, G2 itself belongs to this coset. So G2 belongs to the coset G1, um, GX. And uh, therefore there is some other G in G such that g2 is g1 times uh, g that that is not that that dot is too big that dot is too big um, this is not the action this is just happening in the group so let me just write g1 g and uh, then uh, then uh, what is uh, y2 y2 was supposed to be g2 times uh, x um, but G2 itself, we just showed that is G1 times G acting on X, okay? Uh, but the uh, action is associative, so uh, this is um, G1, G acting on X. Now, I made one uh, mistake in here that this when I say that G2 is in this coset, this G is in here. It's not just in G, it's in the stabilizer. So this is actually in the stabilizer. So G times X, G is in the stabilizer, so it stabilizes X, so it sends X to itself. So this is G1 acting on X, but G1 acting on X uh, was Y1. This is Y1. Uh, thus, I just proved that y2 equals y1, and therefore phi is injective. Okay, so now let's prove that it's surjective. So finally, we want to show that our map is uh, surjective. So uh, it's sending uh, y to uh, g, uh, gx, gx. So um, this is sending G times X to G times the stabilizer. So let's see that phi is uh, surjective. That's the easy part uh, because uh, if we let um, H be a coset, then uh, all the cosets are G times uh, GX for some uh, G in G. So uh, now let Y be whatever happens to X using little g as the action. Uh, then phi of that Y is phi of G acting on X. And we have decided that that is G times GX, which is the code that I was trying to hit. Uh, therefore, uh, phi is surjective. And uh, hence, phi is a bijection of finite sets. And that implies that the sizes of um, the domain and the image are the same. So the sizes of G of this quotient, but this quotient is of size this or of size uh, the index that we were trying to prove and therefore we have proved the orbit stabilizer theorem the size of the orbit is equal to the size of the index of the stabilizer so now uh, let's see one last example before we finish this video here's another action we've been playing with uh, let's g be the subgroup uh, generated by or with elements one one two times three four five six and three five 
four, six, and uh, one, two, three, six, five, four, uh, which is a subgroup of S6. So it is a group and it acts, uh, it acts on X, which is uh, just one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's see what is the orbit of two, for example. Uh, the orbit of two, we saw that uh, two goes to one, two is fixed or two goes to one. So the orbit of two is just one and two. And uh, what is the stabilizer of two? The only elements that stabilize that send a two to itself are the identity and three, five, four, six. So uh, let's see that the orbit stabilizer theorem works. The size of the orbit is two and the size of the index of the stabilizer is what uh, the size of G divided by the size of the stabilizer. Uh, but the size of G is four, the size of the stabilizer is two. So this is two. Uh, so the magic happens once again and uh, the orbit stabilizer theorem uh, holds uh, for this action. Okay, so next uh, we're going to uh, do a little bit more magic with group actions. And we're going to prove uh, the class equation. We're going to discuss the class equation, which is going to allow us to prove uh, very important theorems. Uh, very first thing that we're going to prove using the class equation is going to be um, Cauchy's theorem, for example, but we're going to see some first, a couple of things uh, in between that are already interesting just using the class equation. So next, the class equation. <laughs> 